or is this a, a catastrophe in the waiting? I had the great uh, benefit of calling Frank Erie and telling him that we might be uh, truncating the tower, which for him would have been the tallest building, the most important legacy project for Frank in his 80 plus years. A New York City tower with Frank Deary's signature was an opportunity that the developers were not going to give up on easily. Every time we cross the Brooklyn Bridge, uh, and look at this tower, if it stops, it would be something that you will approach the city parts. Because in the life of a developer, if you only get to do something like this once, you can never replicate this type of opportunity. Presbyterian Hospital in the center of Lower Manhattan put its one-acre parking lot on the market. This, I would say, was a long-coveted uh, parking lot for developers in New York City. What was envisioned was a rental apartment building with world-class architecture, an unlikely combination for New York City. I like to say that the bar for developing um, design-driven rental properties in New York City has historically been quite low. If we could do anything at all with this property, how extraordinary it would be if we could create a building unlike any building that has ever been built in New York. Developers had their eye on Frank Curie to design it. For Frank, it was also an ideal time where he was also looking to the next barrier or like the next frontier, really. We set a very high bar for what we tried to do. The hospital liked the idea of having a neighbor that would be architecturally significant, that would leave a mark on the city skyline, that in some ways would become the new picture postcard image for Lower Manhattan post 9-11. The project would be the tallest residential tower in the Western Hemisphere, with 900 rental units, two plazas, a public school at the base, a floor of doctor's offices, and underground parking. We had all of this going on. We were designing this great building. We have Frank at the helm. Developers rushed into construction in 2006, just in time to secure a tax benefit about to expire. We do this with equity which in the world of ground-up developers is rule number one that you don't break, which is you don't start a building until you have a construction loan. The construction loan was closed two years later, in March 2008. It was a $680 million loan with six lenders. And I would say to you that two weeks after closing it, it would be unreplicatable based on the recession. Timing is everything in development, uh, both in a positive and a negative. The bigger the project, the more risk of developing through cycles, and this was a perfect case study. We were under construction. We had bought everything out at the height of the market. We were literally like the 30th floor. The call went into Frank. I called Frank and I said, look, here's the situation. The world is quite uncertain. Yes, we have lenders, but everybody is deeply concerned. We may need to just stop building. Nothing wrong with a 40-story building. It's highly respectable. Your design will prevail, but it might just be a tad bit shorter in the skyline. Construction was halted in 2009. The developers called in the lenders, called in the unions, called in marketing to measure the demand for 900 prospects for a building like this in a city like New York post-recession. So we had these three uh, fronts that we were driving to figure out whether we should stop or go. And certainly if we had built an ordinary, forgettable residential tower, it would have been open. It was in some ways the labor of love that we had engaged in that had caused us to drive ourselves right into the headwinds of the recession. But some of us were so deeply committed that these buildings become like children. You nurture them and you, you, know, you stick with them and you work out your issues as you go, but you never give up. I'll never forget, Frank said, Marianne, if I have to babysit for the children of the people that live in this building, I will do whatever I have to do to see that this building get built. And there was something he could do, give his name. Deary allowed the developers to use the Deary name for naming and marketing of the building, and the developers were able to negotiate with the unions on labor. They rebid everything that wasn't signed, and in the end, cut $25 million from the construction budget. That trifecta gave us a package of goods that we believe we needed to go in and fight for the tower. In 2010, New York by Deary was back on. It became a fairly public event because when you stop building one of the only two buildings that are being built in the city in the darkest days of the recession, people take note of that. So this kind of played out in the press, which in some ways made it painful, but it allowed the entire city to reconnect with what this building was hoping to be and its aspirations. When marketing began on the tower, some 5,000 images were posted on social media, none of which developers had anything to do with. From the outside, it captivated the city. It captivated the intellectuals. It captivated those that loved architecture. It captivated the man on the street. Revealing what was happening inside 
became another great moment for us because what we did was we built 900 plus units for people who rent. Here you had an ability to experience Frank Erie at his best. It's not typical for a person or an office of his stature to come design things besides the exterior, maybe the apartment design, but you will see Frank touch down to the detail of a doorknob. Quality level in this building in the past been reserved only for condominiums. When we say renters by choice, but I, I think in this building you really need to underline the choice. There's certainly an icon that brought a lot of focus to downtown. I think it's done wonders to the real estate pricing in downtown. In the end, the world-class design would help make the project a very successful investment. But New York by Geary, as it stands today, would ultimately come down to the resolve of a few at a crucial hour who would not back down from a dream to develop an iconic apartment tower with a world-class architect. multiple from the New York Times building. It's like 3.8 for a city ratner. Hit it out of the park. So I came up with a total of about 875, not 850 when I actually ran the numbers here. Because uh, as I said, I can quite make it work there. So I'm just the total credit facility of 545 and take the 330 here of the equity comes to 875. <laughs> All right, so let's go to the pro forma. So now I'm going to use the 2013 numbers that Darcy Staken says, well, here's what my cash flow was on the deal, my effective gross income. We're looking at 2013, 2016. I'm just updating everything here in the net. I'm looking at all these NOIs and cash flows. That gives us the ability to look at the return. So they sold it for just a little over a billion. We know what the cost was on the deal. So we know what our gross proceeds were, right? Net proceeds, forget the partnership equity right now. Our return multiple, we don't have a very high equity multiple in this deal. They went through a lot of trouble for their ego. She was
was in love with it. And Frank Gehry was babysitting a lot of those folks, right? For, I guess, like, 0.18 above the deal. But why did they sell? I thought they were in it for the long run. Well, isn't that interesting? Why do you think they sell? <laughs> we sold partial interest, and it was to get some equity out. They got, all, the, they got all their equity out. Four C Raptors out of the deal. They lowered their risk. So, no, they're, they're a long-term player, mm -hmm. but they decided apparently to deploy their equity somewhere else. And remember, they sold their portion, mm -hmm. NEBF, National Equity uh, Electric Benefit Fund, is still in the deal. I they kept some. No, it says it. Forest City Ratner sold their share. So what are they doing? Do you know? Well, pretty you know much elsewhere, right? Let's see, did I get that right? Let's just go back. So I could have sworn that they kept like somewhere in the 20 or something percent. Forest City sells stake in Gary Power. So we don't know what percent, what stake they sold. So they sold 49% of New York by Gary. Ah, they sold 49% of the And they kept 51%. Yeah, they kept 51%. So they stayed in. So then if you look at the one point, then it doesn't look that bad. Not well. So let's look at that. So then we look at that multiple here, and it goes up to 1.48. It's a little better, but it's still not a home run. But they're still in the They're the still program. in part of the deal. Yeah. That's correct. And so it's not a two, it's not a three, it's not a home run by any means, <coughs> but they saved their reputation. They saved their iconic building. And that's important because it gave them a, we'll call it a platform okay. and a leverage to whatever the next deal is. But I thought it's an object lesson in how, well, they may not get the best return, but they certainly got themselves through a difficult, very difficult situation and then to figure out what the right way was to not only get the building built, but to stay in the deal, and still keep it the way it was originally designed to be. So, now I'm going to ask you to open up your notebooks, and I'm going to give you just 15 minutes to write a summary of what you think this deal is. And I want you to email that to me. And I want you, your own words, to help put that together. It's just an essay question, frankly. Essentially that, you know, here we've gone through this, I mean, you were in the situation, I mean, we've just gone through a discussion for an hour and 15 minutes, I guess, or more, about just this one case study. And so if your investor said, what was this deal about, what was the lesson learned, I'd like you to tell me what that is. And then email it to me.
what was, what is the lesson learned for this particular development here? And what's your takeaway? It's a pretty broad question, but I want to see what you take away from it. See how you're able to write and
prefer, so. do you prefer a Word file or just put, put it into an email? I actually prefer a Word file. Okay. It'd be easier than uh, that way I can have a better document. Thank okay. you. And so next week is your big reveal. Hopefully you'll all be fresh. You won't be working until you know midnight or 3 a.m. that morning of. And in fact, what I'm going to request is that you, I mean, I'll ask, of course, that you send the presentations and your report by Blackboard with plenty of time to spare, and that you actually have a, it'd be nice to have a hard copy of your document as well for us in the jury. I'll give you the specifics there. I'll email it to you. Howard left some information here about his company. And if you want a job, you might have one for you. Thank you. And if you want to spend a few more minutes writing, you're welcome to do so. There's about five or ten minutes left. Yeah, that's right.